Hey everybody, Ryan Alexander with Denison Yachting. Today I'm in Fort Lauderdale and I am excited for two reasons. First reason, it is sweater weather. Uh, it's December 1st, cold front came through Fort Lauderdale last night. And so for a Florida guy like myself to get to wear one of his two sweaters, pretty exciting. Other thing I'm excited about is today's walkthrough. I'm gonna be showing you around a 118 foot intermarine built in 1999 that goes by the name of Motor Yacht Gypsy. This boat is listed centrally for sale with Denison Broker, my friend, and often unwitting mentor, Kurt Bosshart. Uh, I'm excited to show you this boat primarily because it's a US built boat. What makes Intermarine special is that they used to build minesweepers back in the day for the US Navy. And these boats are ballistic proof. Um, their composite hulls are the ticket to their success. It's what makes them such a great structure for refit after refit. And that's what we're gonna be showing you today. We're gonna be showing you a boat that has the bones and really reaps the full benefits of this American built super yacht. The first thing you should know about this 118 is that she's at the tail end of a series of refits undergone to keep her balanced between the charm of her traditional feel and the modern systems that make escaping on board even better. The most recent updates are noticed when you're on the interior of the yacht. She's just had all of the lighting in the interior guest spaces updated to LED lighting. And over the past few months, her owner has poured over $35,000 into gutting and replacing the AV system. And as part of this series of updates, the primary electrical distribution panel in the engine room has all but been replaced. The most noticeable update comes by way of all new wall paneling that shifted the interior away from tan and beige tones towards a cooled white and gray feel. She's also been given a complete overhaul of the bridge deck aft that created more open deck space for lounging and carrying water toys. This 118 foot intermarine was built to ABS specifications and is still in class to this day. With a design that can withstand almost anything and a new electrical system running through the shore power converters, Gypsy is ready to show you foreign shores. Her ride is NIAD stabilized and can hold around 6,800 gallons of fuel, giving you over 3,000 nautical miles of range. You'll also be impressed to know that newer CAT C32A certs are found in the engine room, which means that servicing this yacht is easier and parts are readily available just about anywhere in the world. After we cover all of the mechanical spaces and exterior decks, I'll be taking you inside and showing you the seven stateroom layout found on board that boasts a large private on-deck owner suite. The volume of the guest cabins and salon is all thanks to this yacht's 26 foot beam with a design that still allows for side decks on both the main and upper deck. Our first stop today is all of the way up on the sun deck, a primary area for your friends and family to gather on board this tri-deck super yacht. Up here, you'll find a huge wrapping sun pad that takes up about half of the sun deck's footprint. There's a shaded area in the middle below a large umbrella and more than enough room for a family or two to relax together. Forward of this into port is an alfresco dinette that offers you the best view on board. Here, a molded in L-shaped settee wraps around the tabletop. Opposite on the starboard side, we see a wet bar with a sink and prep space, as well as a refrigerator found below. Just aft of the sun deck, we see the radar arch. Mounted up here is everything you need to keep you connected at sea, like twin Furuno radars and a KVH Fleet 77 track phone system. Rounding out the sun deck is the upper helm, which has been outfitted with two stid helm seats that face the electronics. To add on an extra level of protection, an acrylic cover slides over the navigation equipment and protects them from the elements when you're not using them. So on a windy day, maybe you want a spot that's a little bit more protected. So this will be your area. You step down to the bridge deck aft into this enclosed portion. We're gonna get back to this in just a second, but for now, I wanna turn our attention 
back here. So this used to be a huge sun pad right here in the middle, as you can tell by some old drone footage that I took about a year ago. A part of this refit was removing that, creating a massive open deck space and refitting it with teak. What's left of the sun pad is found aft in the starboard corner, which is now a great spot to uh, sit up, grab a coffee, read a book when you're at anchor. One of the most notable features of the exterior is the recently replaced teak found on every deck, adding an appealing pop to the look of the yacht. Where there was once a sun pad, there's now a ton of flexible open deck space to use for whatever you want, lounging, hosting a party, or stowing more water toys. Currently found up here are two Sea-Doo wave runners on the port side that are deployed and retrieved by a nautical structures davit with a 1,000 pound lifting capacity. I also want to take a second to remind you that even the upper deck has walk around side decks. Turning our attention forward on the bridge deck aft, we come to an enclosed section with a large seating area off to the port side. This U-shaped seating area wraps around a hardwood table, creating a perfect venue for some memorable nights. Directly across from the dinette, there's a wet bar running along the aft side of the enclosure. Here we find a sink and an ice maker. Immediately aft of the wet bar are the stairs that give you access to the sun deck. As you look up, you'll also note the lighting in the overheads, as well as the JL audio speakers. Passing through a large sliding glass door, we next arrive at the Sky Lounge, a private retreat perfect for movie night. An L-shaped sofa is on the port side, resting next to sound treatment on the walls that make this room sound great when the volume is turned all the way up. From here, you can see the TV over in the starboard aft corner. This corner also doubles as a great little reading nook. If you need a place to knock out some work or to respond to some emails, there's a built-in desk on the starboard side, just below large windows in the superstructure. The space found just forward of the Sky Lounge is the wheelhouse. At the helm, we have five multifunction displays and a Furuno Navnet display. This is where the captain has access to the Noble Tech Time Zero navigation software, radar data, and the yacht's camera system. The smaller display is the Maritron ship's monitoring system, which was added in 2017. Below the port side displays, we see the control for the Furuno radar system. Looking centerline, we first see a pair of CAT engine monitors that read off critical engine data. Directly below, there's a Furuno display and an AIS display. Over on the left side of the wheel is one of two VHF radios, BNG Hydra 2 speed and depth display, as well as the joystick for her NIAD bow thruster. Standing or sitting directly in front of the wheel, your captain has a clear line of sight to one of two compasses, a NIAD stabilizer control pad, and the yacht's autopilot. Finally, just outboard on the starboard side are the engine controls, a FLIR night vision camera control, and a pair of ACR searchlight controls. Aft of the wheelhouse into port is the private captain's cabin with plenty of natural light, storage space, and a private ensuite head with shower. Also note that just a few steps outside of the wheelhouse are the yacht's wing stations that are conjoined by a Portuguese bridge that wraps around the front side of the wheelhouse. Wrapping up on the upper deck, let's jump aft and down to the waterline and check out Gypsy's Teak Beach. Accessed from the aft deck, this 118 has a Euro transom with chandelier stairs leading down to port and starboard. These have teak treads and the teak continues down onto the swim platform itself. Towards the foot of the stairs, you'll see that there are shore power hookups to both sides, as well as commercial grade cleats for tying off an oversized tender. The size of this platform allows for tender storage should the need arise. To raise and lower that tender, you would use this davit that's stored inconspicuously in the transom. And then centerline in the transom is a watertight door offering you access down into the lazarette. 
There are some key components down here in the mechanical spaces, including the shore power conversion system that sits right next to the first of two laundry centers. This is a crucial storage area for the yacht and also serves the crew, especially the engineer, with this workshop over on the port side. Immediately forward of the lazarette accessed on the port side is this Intermarine's upgraded and well-equipped engine room. As you can tell, there's plenty of headroom in here and all of the machinery is readily accessed when needed. Upon entering, we see the yacht's twin Northern Lights generators, each of which is 50 kilowatts. These are immediately aft of the recently replaced CAT C32 ACERT engines. The newest item of note is this completely replaced electrical panel I mentioned earlier that was just installed when all of the yacht's lighting was being replaced. Another great feature down here is the sewage treatment plant on the starboard side that gathers all of the black and gray water on board and sterilizes it before it's emptied. There are also two 50 gallon per hour water makers making for an important redundant system. Seeing as this yacht is designed to travel to ports all over the world, she's equipped with an Alpha Laval fuel separator alongside the shore power conversion system that allows you to plug into any dock anywhere on the globe. Each of her CAT C32s have 1,550 horsepower that give this 118 a comfortable cruising speed of 13 knots and a top speed of around 19 knots. When she's at cruise speed, she has about 3,000 nautical miles of range and a remarkable ride thanks to her NIAD stabilizers. No matter where this yacht has found herself, she has served her owners faithfully with some of the best experiences that one could ask for. This is why she's seen such extensive refits over the years. One such area of importance is the aft deck. Its minimal layout and comfortable, oversized alfresco dining area have seen sunsets all over the world. Given the size of the yacht and the height of the main deck above the waterline, this space can be used in privacy at anchor or in her slip. Here, eight guests can gather around the table in a well-lit environment protected from the elements by a large molded overhead. Adding to the stout feeling this area gives off are the commercial cap stands and deck gear found outboard of the dinette. Besides the dinette, the only other primary guest feature found here is the starboard staircase that leads up to the bridge deck aft. Just outside of this staircase, you'll notice that the super yacht, as I've already mentioned, has a walk around side deck around the main deck. Taking these forward brings you to the foredeck, which is our next stop. I've already noted this, but running down the side decks, so we've got teak deck underfoot, these heavy duty handrails make you feel safe. This is where you hook up your boarding ladder, this is where you store the boarding ladder, and then as you finally round the turn, making your way forward, you step up and on to the foredeck. And the thing of note here on the foredeck is how oversized, how overly capable this ground tackle setup is. You've got two overbuilt windlasses that connect to massive anchors. Each are connected by 500 feet of chain, so you have no reason to worry when you're spending the night on the hook. And then I also want to point out, rounding the turn, heading back, we see two doors from this position. Uh, the first one that we see here is the crew door, and a little further down the side of the boat is the side deck entry into the galley. Those are the horns. And now we're gonna take a look at the crew space. Upon entering the crew quarters, we first see a common area with a collapsible dinette for four to lounge or dine. Then there's a set of stairs that leads down to a landing where we see the yacht's secondary laundry center. This one more convenient for the crew than the one found in the lazarette. Rounding the corner brings us to the crew accommodations. Now we're going to leave the crew area, make our way down the port side deck, and head into the galley that I pointed out earlier. This chef's galley is fully equipped. 
It's got everything that you need, plus the counter space that it takes to make great meals when the boat is loaded up with guests. For cooking, we first see a recently replaced cooktop above an oven. Both of these are below an electric range that offers additional lighting to the cooking surface. For cleaning up, there's a twin stainless sink basin inboard, and then turning towards the outside, we see a second sink and a long stainless countertop where meals are plated and staged before being delivered. Your refrigeration is across from the window between two floor-to-ceiling units and four freezer drawers. I also want to note that within the last few months, the flooring in the galley was removed and refit with a durable replacement. Heading aft in the galley, we pass into the formal dining area, where we're going to take a look at the updated salon and where you'll be eating your finest meals. The salon is best experienced first by stepping inside through counterbalanced glass doors from the aft deck. In the aft half, we have the living area of the salon, with the seating offset to the port side below a series of windows within the superstructure. There's an oversized L-shaped settee and an armchair that form a conversation pit around a coffee table. If you've stepped on board during a boat show, this is how you would find the coffee table. And looking through the old listing of information that you have on the boat, you would see the retired interior, which was really warm and made everything look a shade of yellow or orange. The new wall coverings in the salon alone give you an idea of how much this interior has changed. Combine this with the cool and uniformed LED lighting overhead and you are standing in a transformed space. The effect is furthered by the use of electric blinds that nearly black out the salon when you activate them. Forward of the living area is the formal dining room with a massive dining table that the whole family can gather around as your chef impresses you yet again. There's also a sound treated door on the port side that gives you direct access into the galley, an area that we've already visited. As we wrap up here in the salon, I want to really quickly talk about layout. Layout of a super yacht is incredibly important. And one of the biggest differences between a 100 foot and 120 foot boat is what you can do in here with the main deck foyer. Um, looking inboard and aft, there's a staircase that leads up to the port side, cuts back to the starboard side, so that the companionway runs on the upper deck on the starboard side, similar to the main deck. And then you've got this set of stairs. We're gonna come back to this, but this is where you find the six lower guest accommodations. Great thing about this size boat specifically is that the engine room comes about halfway through the salon and on the other side of the engine room bulkhead, you've got your aft VIP staterooms. Again, we're gonna come back to those in just a minute. Two more stops. One, we have our day head, just forward of the guest companionway stairs. And then turning outboard, we see the owner's entrance. This is the primary uh, day in, day out entrance of the owner. Uh, not typically used by crew unless they're getting on and off the boat. Keeps this area nice and clean. And then heading forward, we step directly into the on-deck master. Our first stop in the owner's suite is a separate office with an impressive desk. This space is big enough to have meetings in thanks to its large footprint and an armchair below the outboard office window. From here, you step forward into the owner's accommodation that features an aft-facing centerline king berth that's bathed in natural light through the windows that flank the space. Turning first to starboard, we see a long dressing station below the window that doesn't need to double as a desk thanks to the office. Forward of the vanity, the owner has access to a large corridor with several wardrobes. On the aft bulkhead, we have more storage as well as the hiding place for the master's high-low TV. The lounging area is located on the port side, again benefiting from the natural light from above. And then finally, finishing off the master, we arrive at the ensuite equipped with his and hers vanities. Note that on the countertop and underfoot is a blue rich stone. There are two stalls found in here, the first one being a large shower stall built to the same standards as any luxury hotel. The other stall, just aft, is for the head. 
All right, so we're leaving the master. We're gonna make our way down and wrap up at the lower guest accommodations. I wanna point out there are two different types of hardwood flooring in this boat. One is the kind that we find in the salon, more traditional like you find at your house, and in the main foyer and on the lower level, there's this beautiful, slightly more heavy duty hardwood flooring that really finishes the space off nicely. At the bottom of the stairs, if you head forward, there are four uh, guest staterooms. These are the smaller of the remaining guest accommodations. Or we can head aft, where we check out the two VIPs found down below deck. Taking a look first at the port side cabin, we see the mirrored layout of the most sizable guest accommodations on the lower deck. There's a walk around forward facing berth thanks to the yacht's beam and plenty of storage as well as a desk below the two port windows that can be opened up to let in fresh air. Aft of the desk is a hanging locker as well as the entrance into the ensuite. Jumping over to the starboard side, we see the second VIP cabin. In here, we find the same accommodations as the last cabin, a configuration that your guests will appreciate, especially couples. Wrapping up in these aft guest accommodations, we're gonna step back into the companionway, make our way forward. We first have one of three great storage spaces in here. This is a linen closet, another larger linen closet, great for towels. The crew currently has other uniforms in here. And then this third storage space, great for vacuums. And then if we turn forward and we head to the port side, we are gonna take a look at the next stateroom, which features side-by-side -side berths. This is the port side of yet another mirrored cabin. In here, the sound-treated wall coverings that were part of the refit quiet this cabin down well. Outboard are two whole side windows that are just forward of a hanging locker. Directly across the hall from here, we enter the mirrored version of the last cabin. The entertainment center in this cabin is located right next to the entrance into the ensuite, and like the other cabin, has its own designated direct TV receiver. Heading forward in the lower companionway brings us to the two final guest staterooms on board this 118. First, looking to the port, we see that these cabins have a bunk configuration and plenty of storage. There are two storage lockers in each of these cabins, one of which is inboard and the other is just outside of the head. Across the hall, we see that these forward guest cabins have desks in addition to all of the storage. Forward of each cabin is the private ensuite with a shower stall. So there she is, Motor Yacht Gypsy. Hope you've enjoyed your time on board today. And on behalf of the Denison Yachting team, myself, Ryan Alexander, and broker Kurt Bosshart, thanks for joining us for today's walkthrough. If you would like a spec sheet on the boat, have any other questions, you can reach out to Kurt, uh, leave a comment down below, let us know what you thought about the boat. We will do our best to get back to you. Hope you have a good one. Thanks.